Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final 12th episode, the number 12 out of the dozen of the Red Pill Tamales. Uh, when we embarked on this journey, we had no idea how it was going to be received, how many people wanted the Red Pill, how many people had an open mind and were just skeptical of the media and what they tell us and all the shenanigans. But um, nonetheless, this is listener funded. And you guys decided, you, know, you guys voted with your dollars. You put your money where your mouth is and said, hey, man, don't end it with just one season, 12 episodes. So you, your wish has been granted, man. We're going to keep it going. Thanks to all the patrons. Hit us up, patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. That's all you got to do. Producer Rob in the building. What's up, everybody? Yeah, it's probably better we didn't play any music. I just thought about it, too. Spotify does not like music to be played on the podcast on their platform. Yes, we are on Spotify, y'all. Yeah. At least uh, for now, and at least for the ones that are free, all the bonus content is exclusive to the patrons. So almost like a, you ever done a telethon mm -hmm. where people, you know, call in or whatever? Mm -hmm. it, it's like and right now, as you listen to us speak, go to your desktop, go to patreon.com, search Red Pill Tamales mm -hmm. and pledge your vote to Red Pill Tamales. Yeah, I used to do college radio, which was publicly funded. And most of the funding came from the daytime listeners, which was classical and jazz. Oh, no shit. I had a Sunday night underground hip-hop show so here i was sunday night people cruising military drive san antonio are having to hear me say and don't forget guys the station is, you know we're doing the telethon thing and i don't think any of them donated <laughs> i think it was all the classical music jazz fans in the daytime that kept it going you know what's funny we can kind of use this episode as a, as a bit of a almost like a couple of stories like from the past along with what's going on right now so you're going out of town like we mentioned in the last episode um so, you know, we're trying to get everything wrapped up before you leave. We don't, I don't want to bother you too much while you're off and away from home. No, nah, man, it's going to be so much news happening. There is. Uh, uh, technology will have it to where I might step out on the balcony, freezing in Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, be able to zoom in. Hell yeah. Or somehow, some way, if I got to go to the restroom, bro, and just have the little cell phone right there, you guys going to get your red pill tamales. Go to the porcelain throne. Hey, man, you know, with, with advanced technology, I could do that. You ever had any important calls on the toilet? Nah, nah. <laughs> I don't like to mix, you know, the business with the with, with the, the pleasure. <laughs> with the pleasure, you know, you wanted to say. Hey man, I got a bidet, man. It's pleasurable. Nice. <laughs> I've never experienced one, but I heard that. Hey great. man, you got to Hey, toilet paper shortages don't apply. <laughs> uh, speaking of the early college radio days, can you imagine, or just thinking back, that that shingle bling would be this shingle bling today, talking about the content you're talking about? I mean, who would have thought that? the world we live in today i would have even been privy to back then i mean shit i graduated college 2001 that's a long time ago damn you graduated college 01 i'm old bro 01 i graduated high school 97 damn i graduated high school 08 yeah, yeah you're <laughs> a baby um so i didn't know that donald trump the real estate dude the you know the pop culture you know icon for yeah. the 80s uh was gonna be the commander in chief one that would in my opinion do a fantastic job even though they try to blame him for everything yeah covid they act like covid was his fault you know they act like he somehow fell asleep at the wheel uh when really biden is just proposing shit that he already was doing and not to mention there's a vaccine now thanks to operation warp speed and, and all the doctors and scientists and epidemiologists or whoever <laughs> what is it, vaccinologists? Yeah. <laughs> Whoever came up with them vaccines, um, that I'm not in for I'm not first in line. I'm not even tenth in line. I'm nowhere in Yeah, in right. Line. Uh that, a lot of people were asking, Are you gonna take it? Are you gonna take it? I mean, I'm here's the reason why I'm in no hurry. I'm forty one. I mean, in decent health, nothing major that I know of, thank God. So why would I take my chances yeah. with the vaccine? They, they they say it hurts, and they say you got to take multiple. Yeah, and I heard it's like the it's like a hangover from hell almost. Mm. You know, wow. head, body aches, and shivering, all that stuff. It's like oof. I'm yeah. trying to avoid that right now. Why would I give it to myself? Yeah, I'm afraid of that. Why would I? Um, you think if we get the not think, but when we get the studio set up because of our patrons, you're gonna have mugs and stuff like that around that people can see on camera. Because right now you can no, they can only see you. They can't see that beautiful mug. They can't see the mug. No, nah, oh, okay. it's a sure. close up shot. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what's the question? That we're gonna have uh, some some very patriotic uh, styling to the to the set or to the uh, podcast. Yeah, I, I'm curious um, 
what we're going to... Obviously, we need more American flags up in here. Yeah. Um, because I think, I mean, if you're American, you're an American citizen. If you live here and you take advantage of what she has to offer, you know, opportunity and capitalism and freedom. And I mean, some states don't have their freedom right now. But um, I mean, I feel like in the process of all this fake news and division and the algorithm, I feel that America kind of got shitted on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like pop, kind of like not pop culture, but. You know, like we were saying last episode, the Demi Lovato's and the Selena Gomez's and, you know, I couldn't in right conscious. Like, okay, I need to see a little bit more patriotism from you. You know what I mean? Like, you can tell everybody to vote a certain way, but let me find out you're not pro-America. Mm -hmm. You're not America first. Yeah, I think a lot of people will take for granted the fact that we were even born in the United States. I think that's a pretty cool lucky luck of the draw, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, absolutely, do, Man. I mean, my parents, I could have easily been born in Mexico. Same. Pedro, Pedro Herrera, el tercero. <laughs> de ahí en Bairamoso, Tamaulipas, 18 de marzo, cruising la 20. And probably wouldn't speak English, maybe. I don't know. Probably wouldn't live in America. Probably wouldn't be red pilling people. Nah. May, may or may not have a podcast. I don't know. <laughs> Imagine how many people right now are starting podcasts in Mexico. Isn't that kind of trippy? Well, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I was on one. Uh, the comedian Chava Chiles from uh, Saltillo. So, yeah, they, shit, all those Mexican comedians down there, they all got podcasts and stuff. But, um, uh, I want to start the episode with, so shout out Michael Berry. Uh, he posted the Bill Gates. We kind of touched on it. We went, there was so, so many, so much news coming out that we talked a lot about different things on the mm -hmm. uh, episode 11, but now it's episode 12. We're going to cover a couple of things that we didn't go over. And uh, since our Wi-Fi is a little wonky still back here, I'm going to be Ooh. able to, I'm going to be able to play it through the... Uh, you know what? It's been tripping. I think that cold weather got something to do with it. Because uh, the baby was trying to watch YouTube in the in the living room. Mm -hmm. And that shit was tripping. Oh, it so, is pretty fucking cold right now. It's starting to feel like winter again. I'm thinking something something froze up. <laughs> <laughs> something froze up. Here, I'm going to... Luckily, we have the technology. A million people in California are right now under brand new stay-at-home orders uh, as hospitals there uh, risk being overwhelmed. Um, there are a lot of governors uh, who oppose bringing back these lockdown orders and forcing businesses cl to close. What do you think? Do you think more states need to consider taking that kind of drastic action and the kind of drastic action we saw when the pandemic first began? Or can there be a more nuanced approach? Well, certainly mask wearing uh, has essentially no downside. They're not expensive. Bars and restaurants in most of the country will be closed as we go into this wave. And I think, sadly, that's appropriate. Depending on how severe it is, the decision about schools is much more complicated because there, you know, the benefits are pretty high. The amount of transmission is not the same as in restaurants and bars. So, uh, you know, trade-offs will have to be made. But this, the next four to six months uh, really call on us uh, to, to do our best because we can see that this will end and you don't want, you know, somebody you love to be the last to die of coronavirus. When do you think life will fully return to what we thought of as normal back in January? No masks, no social distancing, uh, no other protective measures necessary. It takes a sip. Certainly by the summer, we'll be way closer to normal than we are now. But even through early 2022, unless we help other countries get rid of this disease and we get high vaccination rates in our country, the risk of reintroduction will be there. And of course, the global economy will be uh, slowed down, which hurts America economically in a pretty dramatic way. So we'll have, starting in the summer, about nine months where a few things like big public gatherings uh, will still be restricted. But, you know, we can see now that somewhere between 12 to 18 months, and we have a chance, if we manage it well, uh, to get back to normal. And obviously we're changing... Next how many months? 12 to 18 months. Ah, oh, that pendejo Bill Gates. What in the hell does Bill, Bill Gates know or have to do with all this? I I've still haven't really dug, other than like the whole vaccine kind of like correlation a little bit of funding or whatever the fuck. Well... I guess the Bill and Melissa Gates, is that her name? Mm -hmm. Their foundation, 
they've been uh, very uh, hands-on and proactive about um, everything dealing from like malaria. I remember during cafecito time mm-hmm. when Marisol and I would go live damn near daily from the front porch. <laughs> <laughs> um, folks would be like, you know, this all this Bill Gates stuff, man. You know, he's he's part of this overall scheme. Da 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 da. And I was like sticking up for Bill Gates. I was like defending him. I was like, man. <laughs> This dude got all this money. I mean, he might be a little autistic. We don't know. But he's giving away so much to try to eliminate. You know, he's spending all this money on mosquito net coverings for these developing countries and his third world stuff. And, you know, trying to help, you know, dengue fever and the mosquito problem over here and blah, 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 blah. But I'm starting to think that, like, bro, how how much have you factored in the... uh the long-term repercussions of wiping out an entire industry of hurting small businesses, entrepreneurs, you you know, it's just Amazon, Walmart, Target, Google, Apple, Microsoft. It's their shit that's just shooting up. You know, they're not hurting at all. And like the economics of it. You know what I mean? Like it's what like, did you what was that stat you read before when we were uh, doing a little research earlier? About the amount of, was it black, black owned businesses? Oh, or? yeah, yeah. I think it was like 50%. Let me uh, pull it up. And this was just due to the pandemic or the shutdowns? Yeah, the, somebody here, uh, Forbes.com. The COVID 19 crisis has wiped out nearly half of black small businesses. And the other 50% were knocked down by uh, Antifa and BLM. That sucks, man. That's crazy. If that's true, if that's like across the the country, that is scary alarming. I mean, not not to mention, um, oh, look, someone said, so can we say lockdowns are systemic racism, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because you want to call everything systemic racism, but you're locking down and you allowing these people to destroy and burn black businesses. Yeah, like Michael Berger said, it's easy when your livelihood is not at stake. To say things like that or to call for things like that. Yeah, because, I mean, imagine, like, minority groups, people of color, who have been considered disenfranchised by certain systems in our country, right? Okay, well, uh, someone's ability to eat, someone's ability to provide, if you ain't got no capital, if you, you know what I mean, your economy's fucked up. You can't go to work. There's some mental health that comes with that. You know, it's it's just almost like ravishing, you know, minorities. The, the same folks that supposedly the left is all about protecting and all about. Meanwhile, you're locking them down and, and people don't factor that in, right? It's just like, no, we got to stay safe. We need a lockdown because people don't wear their mask and people don't listen. It's like, okay, the way Bill Gates just said even if we do get it under control here, who's to say through one of our international hubs, we're not going to allow someone else in from some other country who hasn't got it under under control? That's a good point. I meant to bring this up <clears throat> on the last episode, but it's funny because we've mentioned in the past how, you know, the flags, the Texas flag and the U.S. flag and secession mm-hmm. and all that. Well, after the Supreme Court <clears throat> didn't hear the Texas lawsuit, some GOP leaders are saying, I think it's time for Texas to seat again. <laughs> Man. <laughs> fucking crazy. I'm, I mean, I love America and everything, but if she keeps going down some weird road and if they're not running it right, you might want to take your chances and be like, hey, well, fuck it. Texas, we could just be the Republic of Texas and I'll just fly out of my country <laughs> into America. And I, I think we mentioned it too, how... Um there was, I mean, it, the world is being so divided, right? The, the whole, how it seems like it's two countries within one. And in that same uh, article on the Hill, again, I can't pull it up. Uh, they were talking about other law-abiding states as well. So not just Texas, but other states who consider themselves law-abiding that are following the Constitution and not with the things that are being alleged, we should say, mm-hmm. uh, to also become their own, you know, their own whatever. So their it own was, union again. So it would have been Texas and how many other states? I can't, it's a few of them. It's, it's a, I would say half a dozen at least, if not more, probably more. Yeah. Almost. How about we go back to the original 13 colonies, that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, I saw someone, too. I think someone on the left made their own little map where mm-hmm. they're like, okay, y'all want to talk about seceding? And they made it to where it was like Canada, 
plus California and New York or some shit. Like they were going to merge in with Canada and create some shit. Okay. And then it was going to be like Texas and a lot of other, I guess, red states or something. And the way that person uh, labeled it, I think she called it like Jesus land or something. Like Mm. almost like crazy Southern Baptist Bible thumper people. It's, and it was sounded very like, okay, bitch, you atheist, you anti guy, like, what's going on? Why yeah. are you calling? <clears throat> I, I was starting to read this yeah, the other day, actually, and since I can't pull it up, I don't. It's not on the top of my tongue, but um, you know, they were saying that it's possible that if that if that were to happen, let's just say theoretically, you would lose a lot of rights that Americans have if you secede. You you no longer like your citizenship, for instance, you wouldn't be an American citizen anymore. You'd be a whatever transpires. Texas, yes, yeah, so I guess. So it's, my country, my country. Texas, uh, it would be a whole different thing. So it's just like, you know, it's a bunch of other hurdles you would have to overcome, maybe running a business in this newfound utopia or whatever. I mean, so far, Texas has a very, I don't know if we would keep in this hypothetical, if Texas would keep its friendly business climate. <clears throat> but I mean, so far. Well, I would say that's probably why we'd be able to do it because of how friendly, you know, the, the business climate is. So the country of Texas would still have Elon Musk, Joe Rogan. Yeah, Chingo Bling. <laughs> exactly. Red Pill Tamales. Uh, or what was it? Oracle. Oracle. Um, Tesla. Um, uh, SpaceX. Yeah, Goya. Goya. H-E-B. Shout out to Goya. H E B. All the ports, you know, all the oil, energy leaders. I mean, I don't I know. Mean, it didn't sound that bad. I mean, yeah, it didn't sound know, all that bad. Keep, keep talking shit. We will succeed. <laughs> Uh, and that reminds me, I sent, I didn't send it to you, but I sent it to my soul. It was an article of. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you wear North Face? Oil and gas company. Mm-hmm. They wanted to treat. Their, all their employees and staff with custom North Face jackets. It's like a gift they do every year. Mm-hmm. They get a nice item and put like the company logo on it. Well, they tried to place an order through North Face, and I can't remember if it was the CEO himself. I could pull it up, and but he was like, "No, we're gonna." They're like taking a stance, like, "Yeah, we don't want to associate." Yeah, with Petrochem, blah blah blah. And it's like, bitch, your material, the jackets are made from a, you know. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to make it without fossil fuels. And so they, so basically, um, the, uh, the company, they put it out there in, in the press. I have the one I sent my soul, actually. I'll play it real quick. I bet. <laughs> I say I'll play it if it plays. Yeah, I'm putting it up right here. Um, here, you want me to play it? Well, I have it on oh, the, you got it? yeah, I got it on the Bluetooth. Got it. Yeah, Innovex. Innovex, yeah, Downhole. which is based out of Houston. Downhole Solutions. It was there it is. Midland and Odessa. This is CBS 7 News at 6. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here at 6. Topping our news, the CEO of an oil and gas services business operating in the Permian Basin says the North Face, a popular outerwear company, recently denied his order of nearly 400 jackets solely because of the industry it is in. CBS 7's Joshua Skinner spoke with the CEO and has the details. Joshua? Innovex Downhole Solutions says it was recently denied an order of about 400 jackets from the North Face, a popular outerwear company based solely on the fact that they're in the oil and gas business. But many of the products that companies like the North Face provide, such as cold weather gear, rubber boots and fleece, are all made from petroleum products. I, I was surprised, but not surprised, if that makes sense. That's Adam Anderson, CEO of Innovex, a company based in Houston, but with nearly 100 workers in the Permian Basin. Each year, the company gets a Christmas gift for its employees. This year, it was supposed to be a North Face jacket with an Innovex logo, a company Innovex has ordered gear from in the past. They told us that we did not meet their brand standards um, and we were, we were kind of separately informed that well, what that really meant was that we were an oil and gas company. The irony of the North Face denying service to an industry that provides the ability for it to make and sell its products isn't lost either. Uh, let's say the recreational, recreational activities that they, uh, uh, that they encourage are all things that require hydrocarbon to make the products, to uh, provide the, uh, let's say, the, uh, the means to get to whatever activity folks want to perform. It's just so intertwined with everything that we do. Everything is right. It's a position Anderson wants to convey to the North Face and the rest of the world. So he responded to the North Face via LinkedIn, penning a four-page letter about the importance of the oil and gas industry to modern life. It quickly went viral. Hydrocarbons are critical not only to energy, but also basically most of the products that we consume uh, and utilize today. The jacket that we're wearing, uh, our clothes, the computer, the phone, boots, whole variety of um, uh 
things that are made today uh, directly from hydrocarbons. Innovex still got the jackets, but through a different company. We reached out to the North Face for comment via phone, email, Twitter, and Facebook, but have not received a response. Anderson isn't mad, but hopes the situation can help create a dialogue about the importance of oil and gas. I think there's a view out there in, in the world that's uh, increasing that says that um, uh, oil and gas is bad. And I, I just fundamentally disagree with that view in every dimension. In Midland, I'm Joshua Skin. Bruh. So wh- why why does North Face feel the need to... um? take a stance i mean they're trying to be green are they trying to virtue signal that's a hundred percent what it is in my opinion the virtue signaling and a lot of people i saw that we chose to put this on the what did you said page and people were there's so i mean because a lot of fans you have to think are probably from texas let's just say Mm -hmm. uh but there's people from all over the country that work in the energy industry and they were pissed so they're on some go woke go broke exactly hmm i wonder because i'm from my perspective, North Face never struck me as some like frou frou progressive like Harry Styles in a dress. I didn't think so either. But the article where this video is uh, goes to say that uh, the North Face doesn't want to support the oil and gas industry in the same way they would reject the porn industry and tobacco industry. So they lumped petrochem with porn, porn and, and tobacco. tobacco. Boy, you stupid as a motherfucker. There are some glitches in the Matrix going on around the world right now. The Matrix is real glitchy today, y'all. You might need to take two red pills. (laughs) These last few months has been glitchy as fuck. I mean... 2020 is the glitch. It's the glitch year. I guess they... I guess North Face figured... North Face figured, like... I mean, surely they're not going to go out on a limb and be pro-Trump, right? So they figured... Oh, we're going to be anti-gas, petrochem, because we're so fucking green. Maybe because they're supposed to be like an outdoorsy type of... Um, I guess. But all their products are made out of... Yeah. F- what is it? Uh, what do you call that? Like plastics and all that shit comes from any like rubber and plastics and all that. Mm-hmm. It comes from uh, petroleum. Mm-hmm. And uh, people were like, well, it looks like it's Patagonia I'm going to. And then other people were like, well, Patagonia is all about going green. Like, they completely want to cut off all carbon emissions and vow to do it by, like, 2030 or some shit. I wonder if they they make any things out of, like, recycled plastics. Patagonia does. So, apparently, they're they're up to, like, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 percent where it's, like, recyclable resources or whatever. Which I would still like to know. Like, what are these recyclable resources and where do they come from and whatever. But... Everyone listening to this is going to die and we're still going to have oil. Like, fossil fuels are still going to run this earth for as long as this earth fucking rolls. Yeah. That's yeah. how and I then, see it. Yeah, and the fact... I mean, one of the biggest things about all that climate stuff, the Green New Deal, many would argue that the Green New Deal that AOC put together will pretty much bankrupt, like, just end, break our fucking economy, put us out of business, and we'll be poor shit, third world country style. We'll, we'll get fucked. And um, I know we've touched upon it in prior episodes how, you know, how like these windmills and these solar panels will get made somewhere else. They'll be polluting. These other countries will be polluting the earth as they make these windmills and these solar panels or whatever. And I just I I find it odd that the North Face didn't just say, just send them their fucking jackets. You know what I mean? Instead, they're like, "Uh, we hereby formally, bitch. You know what I mean? Motherfucker, sell me the goddamn jacket. <laughs> so you're telling me I can't go to the mall, buy your fucking jackets, and then go embroider our logo on it? Mm-hmm. My mass. <laughs> it's so stupid. One, it's like you use their material to make your shit, right? And the other is they're still a customer. You know, they're like they're they're paying. It's free market. You know, it's what are we what are we talking? Now, are you against capitalism as well? Like you don't want to make the money? And then they they lump it with porn and cigarettes. That was weird. It's like the cars y'all drive on are sitting on round petroleum based circles, rubber. You know, how much percentage of the inside of that car, their belts, their shoes, the leather seats. The the North Face themselves are factories. Well, not leather seats. That's an animal. (laughs) But you know what I'm saying? If it's like synthetics, the carpet, the paneling, the fucking... uh, uh, quarter Not quarter panel. El el pinche fender, el fiberglass, cabrón. Fiberglass. North Face. What do you, I mean? What do you? What do you? What are you trying to do? What are you gaining? Are you trying this? to be the Biden of clothing, like <laughs> the Kamala Harris of fucking jackets? 
<laughs> no, they would be the AOC, I guess. Even though she made also hoodies that have like Rylon or whatever the fuck and said, you know, Green New Deal or some shit on it. Talk, no, uh, tax the rich. She, yeah, no, she had a whole fucking collection. Tax the rich, you know, Green New Deal, go green some shit. Man, yeah. and you know what, too, man, is all these little youngsters, especially that go to college and get in debt for some liberal art shit, they're probably eating it up. Yes, queen. She's Latina. She used to be a waitress, Rob. She used to be a waitress. Isn't it weird how she's somehow the most popular congresswoman in history? I wonder how that happened. But she's just, she used to be a waitress. She should probably go back to it. Stop hating on waitresses. I love waitresses. I love women. <laughs> I pick up as many women as I can well, in the past. You're supposed to call them servers. not you know They can call themselves waitresses, but you got to be careful calling them waitresses. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a server. Who said this? It's a thing, bro. It's not, you know how like, you know like I call myself a wetback, but you better <laughs> not call me a wetback. It's like that. It's like the W word. I think that's uh that's a really hard comparison to make, but I, I see what you're doing. Well, kind of like arguably the N word. Right? Okay, sure. Some folks can say it. Some folks can't. Yeah. Same thing with servers and waitresses. I didn't know that was a thing. What yeah. about flight attendants? Same thing. Is there another word for it? Um, stewardess. Stewardess. Yeah. Have you ever called him stewardess? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before I was uh, woke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I can't keep up. I can't keep up with, either. With the semantics. But I mean, I, whatever. Oh, we didn't talk about the flight thing with the baby. We did didn't. We? No, no, no. It's also on my list. So you fly a lot. Um, they, okay. Before so United. The, before the shutdown. <laughs> before the shutdown. So United basically kicked off a couple who had a two year old that just wouldn't keep her mask on or wouldn't let him put the mask on her. Uh, kicked him off the flight kept their luggage and the baby carrier on the plane to whatever destination it was supposed to go and just left these people stranded. And I have that video too. And it's fucking, it's sad, man. It's bummer. This lady started recording. It's like she knew this is going to go viral because something's about to go down, right? Starts recording from the very beginning of this poor baby not wanting to put the mask on to her crying and kind of telling the story. And after this 30-second New York Post ad goes through, I'm going to play you the video. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so we're traveling to Boston in a couple of days. We have a two-year-old, or well, two and a half. We're flying Southwest because I got points, Holla. and and I don't. I need to see what's the rule. Like, does does Penny need to wear a mask? Like, what the fuck? That's a good. Yeah, you might want to look into that. She says because our two-year-old would not put on a mask, and we tried. I mean, I'm gonna put a video on. <laughs> And they're sending all of our bags and Adeline's car seat to New York. And we're banned off of United Forever because a two-year-old would not put on a mask. Did you see that video? Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. So this is... So for listeners, basically, the mom's trying to put the mask on. The dad's holding the baby. The baby's literally like, get off me. No. They're coming fast. Okay. Okay. I thought you were going to say Still trying. And then the fucking, what do you want to call him? Stewardess flight attendant comes up, says you got to get off the plane. Do you guys do this all the time or what? Like, what? This is compliance. I'm literally holding it over my daughter's face. This is compliance right here. She, we can't force her. She's literally holding it and she's crying. You're gonna do this to us? Like right now? Yeah? Wow. Alright, let's go. Bruh. Okay. And then just fucking little two year olds walking in front of their parents off the plane with their backpack on. And then they kept their stroller and flew it to, to the uh, ridge, yeah. wherever the city the, the stroller and all the luggage. So basically, now you're stuck at an airport with your baby, without your luggage, without your stroller, and your, your baby stuff because of, of a mask on a two-year-old. Hmm. Even though everybody was just huddled up together in the fucking terminal, you know, they breathing in the same air still. Yeah, that shit doesn't turn on until the plane ter- takes off. So the recirculation, it's still the same air until the plane takes off. So that argument's invalid. I've seen people already fucking talk about Stock that. Stock out on. Jingle Bling is in that position. What does is, what is the, the Tamale King do? Um, I think what I'll do, what I would do, I would probably just um, 
Like, you know how he was like, you're going to do this to us? Really? I probably wouldn't have even said that. I would have been like, bet. <laughs> yeah. And I would have got off that plane. And then I and then I would have probably called, like, a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? How much we going to get from United? 100%. We, we suing. Mm-hmm. We could set out of court for <clears throat> about two of them planes. <laughs> um. I think really my energy would have went towards calming Marisol down, pulling her off of the flight attendant. <laughs> she would have went straight MMA. That's a good point. And then Penny would have jumped in. She she know how to throw them hands too. She does. <clears throat> so, yeah, people get annoyed, man. People get, you know, I don't know. I think there was a lot of context there. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like there was some weird edit from what I saw. The New York Post put it up. Um so they've been getting censored. I don't think they're trying to edit anything. I wonder. I, exactly. I wonder what like take your L, Chingo. Like the the left, mm-hmm. the cholos with keyboards. I wonder how they would. I want to retweet it just to trigger people mm-hmm. and see who's gonna jump in my mentions and be like, "Well, that's because Trump didn't, you know, take the. They, he said COVID wasn't real. It's a hoax. It's because all those Republicans think COVID's not real and they don't want to wear a mask. And it's because of the, like, what are you gonna say? Like, at what point? At, so if the baby was a year and a half, then he, she wouldn't need a mask, right? Was oh how is it? Is that I don't it's know. Two, I, I thought it's like two years and okay, up. Okay, okay, I didn't know that. See how arbitrary? Mm-hmm. Like, well, when's her birthday? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like. The parents had masks on, you know? The parents had their fucking thing on. They were just like, let's just go, I mean, Let's just get this plane on the fucking skies. I wonder if they said, um, if you give her a COVID test right now, and you'll see she's negative, and then we can leave. They're like, uh, they'll probably be that. like, no, because United. And then they don't back down either. Like, you're filming them, and they're just like, sorry, must comply. Idiots. And it, that's the thing about the airlines, too, is that I've seen and heard entertainers complain about them for years, but it's it's one of those things where, what do you what else are you going to do? There's only so many airlines. What are you going to do, take Greyhound? Yeah, do they, you think they give a fuck? Get off their plane. Southwest is the best. I focus Southwest. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know if, if they would do some shit like that. Maybe they would. Because, you know, what is it? Is it the, uh, like, the federal, like, the airline commission? There's guidelines as far yeah. as that? That's something you might want somebody sort of look into. Just, and then corporate, yeah. too. Like, United takes a stand. You know, just the way it varied from Black Rifle Coffee Company and Starbucks. Uh-huh. That's so, true. I don't know. It just seems kind of arbitrary because it's got to be federal because they're flying across different states. They're landing in one state, landing in another. So it's not like Cuomo or, or you know, Abbott or any of that comes into play. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. That's true. Early on in this, I remember having a... An acquaintance, I see him <clears throat> boarding a flight, <clears throat> excuse me, and then not, it was at a time where I think he didn't have to wear it or for some reason in the mask, like it wasn't mandated, and then it was, and then there was a point where you didn't have to wear it on the mask, but depending where you were going, you had to put it on before you landed in the state you were going to. It's like, the person was like, I didn't, uh, that's why I took this flight, because I didn't have to do this, and now you're telling me I had to put a fucking mask on when I get to this other state, like, that's not a part of the fucking... Imagine mask. being in the air, and it's like, we're now 40,000 feet up. <laughs> We're flying over Arkansas. Make sure to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can your take mask your mask off. off. And we're in Mississippi. Put it back on. <laughs> but we're now we're in Florida. You can take it off. In Florida, you can take it off and spit in each other's mouth. <laughs> yeah, your sibling, your own sibling could do it. <laughs> in Florida. <laughs> we love you, Florida. We're just joking. I love Florida. That's one of the states that I, I know I'm going to be able to tour in uh, 2021. Oh, hardcore. You know, we're going to hit Naples, West Palm Beach, possibly Tampa, Orlando, maybe Homestead, uh, Miami Improv. Shout out to Doral. All, todos los Venezolanos out there. Uh, yeah, we get Miles Vidal out of the show. Yeah, hopefully so. Yeah, I got, man, I always reminisce about how many people I know in Florida, how much time I actually spent in Florida, especially Miami, how many folks I know out there, uh, like, that they can't deport us all album, probably a, mm, at least three or four tracks were recorded out there. No like, shit. Like Who That with a Pitbull and Fifth Four Weeby. We recorded that in Miami, uh, somewhere like I think near the beach or some shit. Um, the one with uh, I Ball Everywhere I Go with Lucky. Mm-hmm. We recorded that. That's a Jim Johnson beat. We did that out there in Miami. 
and then uh, Jim Johnson. Yeah, he did a few. So we were out there, and but I always trip out because it's like, man, I know a bunch of people, a bunch of DJs. Like some of the cats that were like real young at the time, now they're grown and shit, and people got lives and stuff. Y'all old men now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Old men with families for the most part. Yeah. Talking about politics and get off my lawn. Yeah. Here's the deal. Come on, man. <laughs> I hope people went out and, and found that uh, civil rights video and listened to it, the one we played on the last podcast, because it's kind of a long video, the one that was leaked, the audio of him talking to the civil rights oh, leaders. okay. And just hearing all the shit he had to say. And one of the clips, which we ended up finding it later, where he basically says, well, the hell with y'all. Or, the hell with y'all. The hell with y'all. If you don't think, you don't agree, or the hell with y'all. Like, I'm not gonna not deny the Constitution. I'm executive order. I'm not gonna and defund the police. They kicked our ass with that all across the board. We're gonna give we're them gonna, more money. We're gonna give reform. And blah, blah, blah. so basically, you use the tragedy of George Floyd to bring in money, help your cause, use it as part of your campaign. You you promoted this Nazi hoax, the Charlottesville. Further divided Americans. It put a target on our backs. People like you and I, Rob. Mm-hmm. Anybody that's like Trump friendly, Trump curious, any of that shit. Uh, just America fucking friendly. It divided us. It put a target on our back. He's promoting his defund the police thing. It's scaring people. You know, people using that fear on the right to target the left, saying this is what this is what the Democrats want. But they really are defunding the police in a lot of places. Austin was trying to do it. Minneapolis has done it. L.A. cut a bunch of funds. New York cut a bunch of funds. Their crime is up. Murder rates are up. In Houston, Governor Abbott had to call, who was it? The Oh, yeah, the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles, I think, or Texas Department of Transportation. To bring in who? Like the uh, Highway Patrol? Yeah. So state bring troopers, in, I believe. Bring in some state troopers to Houston because to back up HPD, Houston Police Department. I asked my buddy to see uh, what's good with that. And... um. Because of like just road crime rage. and road rage in particular. Yeah. Road rage. It's just everybody's fucking losing their mind. Can't go to work and shit. The, the world is all crazy. Meanwhile, this asshole gets elected. Uh, talking about a police are the pro- with anti-police rhetoric. Yeah. Using anti-police rhetoric. Using George Floyd's tragedy for his benefit. And then once he's in... I, I saw BLM even t- put something out that said it was like it's been 37 days since they, you know, elected him, quote unquote, and uh, still no callback on our meeting from Harris. Biden. Oh, yeah. So somebody tweeted like a compare and contrast mm-hmm. where it's like before, like how it started versus how it's going. And the first one, it's kind of like we need to get Biden in there. y'all. We need to get Biden in there. We need to donate Biden, Biden, Biden. And then it's like, and he won, and we haven't heard back. It's been 32 days since we requested a meeting with Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. We've heard no response. That was from Black Black Lives Matter. Sam Tripoli posted it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, motherfuckers got played. And he's about to mandate 100 days, mass, some shit. Uh, but hey, man, we the sellouts, Rob. Yeah, we're the crazy ones. We're the crazy ones. And we're just trying to tell y'all. Hey, y'all, they full of shit. No, they not. Take your L, chingo. And it's like, okay, he's basing his whole campaign on a hoax, on the Charlottesville fine people hoax, the most debunked hoax in history. So either either he don't know, somehow he's the leader, you know, he's about to be leader of the free world, but he doesn't know that that shit is fake. Mm-hmm. And he's about to base his whole campaign on it, still to this day. So when people ask, will Trump attend the inauguration? Mm-hmm. What Trump should say, if he apologizes for that fine people hoax, and show everybody that you've been lying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he has been asked that. And what did he say? He might have said like, uh, "I'm not thinking about that," or or something like, "It's gonna be my inauguration," or some shit like that. Trump, when they yeah. asked him, mm-hmm. he should say, "Hey, I'll go if he apologizes for the fine people hoax," because it painted him and everybody that follows him as a racist. You know, because that narrative helped. Oh boy you know, quote unquote, win. Yeah, it's a real, it's a dangerous, I mean, one that was like a dangerous way to kind of march forward on your campaign. But um, yeah, after the fact, now let's say that it's all done. Let's say that, you know, there's a 99% chance that Biden will be president on January 20th. Now you still have this mess to deal with, right? And a mess that he's already not really attending to when it comes to talking to the 
you know, uh, civil rights leaders, well, what is he going to do for the general public if he's not talking to them and doing anything that they ask? I don't know, bro, but like nobody tapped him on the shoulder. It was like, hey, um, you know, the Charlottesville thing you keep bringing up at all these rallies, talking about, and they, and they were there with the tiki chargers and they're coming out of the bushes with veins bulging, <laughs> yelling with hate. And Come on, man. Nobody told him, hey, uh, hey, Joe, um, the news cut out a part, and he really didn't call Nazis fine people. He was talking about the other people that were there protesting the taking down of the statues. So how much longer are you going to... They don't know, man. They don't know. They believe me. They believe the news. And everybody just... And the minute you tell them, you know that he didn't tell you to drink bleach. Oh, chingo. Okay, well, now it's just semantics. Because he did say disinfect. But, but, but... Or you'd be like, you know he didn't call Nazis fine people. Oh, Chingo, the Proud Boys are the bad guys. <laughs> it's like, I, I really, let me know in the comments, man. Like, how do y'all feel about Antifa? Are y'all really falling for that shit? Do y'all really feel like these little anarchists that go around tearing shit up, burning up businesses and, and trying to ride the wave, trying to ride George Floyd's wave, Breonna Taylor's wave? I mean, how y'all feel about Antifa? Like, y'all don't see... Everybody's like, oh, it's the Proud Boys. What the fuck? Show me the Proud Boys tearing some shit up yeah. and burning something. Chingo, their Proud Boys are, are white supremacists. Okay, because the main dude is Afro-Cuban, Afro-Latino. So he's pretty much black and he's brown. So how, how is he racist? You know, there, there's a lot of people that are, you know, super cynical people that it might say uh, voting doesn't work because if it did, they, they wouldn't allow it, basically. <clears throat> to a point where if voting actually made that big of a difference, you know, the, the government basically wouldn't let you do it because that's not the way the deep state works, right? That's not the way that the people that are pulling the strings work. And you can you can chew on that for a bit and say, man, that kind of like for the longest time in history, that has been true a lot of times, like some really crazy shit has happened. But then Trump wins, right? Kind of shatters some of those beliefs, I would think. And then here we are at this election at the crossroads of the most, uh, what wording can I use? And I get this video taken down the most, you know, nefarious interesting type of dynamics to happen and you have to think to yourself i've never heard more people in my life that i'm friends or acquaintances with all of a sudden think that you know not that they know everything about politics but that what what has been happening is is true and it's it's all factual you know media's right blah 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 but at least they're like delving into it more i don't know if what's happening now is going to cause more people to actually look into the politics and how the world works and maybe that benefits in the future well here's the thing here's the key thing Sometimes looking into it more makes it worse. This is why. Because some people's definition of looking into it more just means CNN on all the time. Right, right. Or I'm just going to look at sources that agree with what the fuck I'm thinking already. So now you have confirmation bias. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll be watching... Um, some shit on YouTube that's like, you know, it might be like Officer Tatum or somebody, right? That's basically talking about some conservative shit, the right. And we might have some company over and they might be like, well, how do you feel about, you know, XYZ or didn't Trump XYZ ABC? And how would it, what about, da, da, and it's like, that's what happens when like you look in deeper, but you're still in a new silo. You're mm -hmm. still in your own bubble. Like they always say, like, Chingo, you're just regurgitating right-wing talking points. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what a right-wing talking point is, really. I don't know where to get a memo. but <laughs> You know what I mean? To get a list of talking points. But I try to be up on game in terms of, okay, climate change. What are the two arguments? Okay, lockdowns. What are the two arguments? And then try to see kind of what makes sense to you considering, you know, considering the sources and what examples or what reasoning um, on down the line, like even the uh, the North Face thing, some people might be like, "Well, Chingo, it's the right thing to do. You have to take a stance, right?" Technically, that's the other side, but then the other side of the argument, you know, which we already said, it's kind of like, "Okay, how the fuck is this cigarettes and porn?" Um, Dan <laughs> Crenshaw had a uh, Gad Sad. Have you heard Gad on Rogan? 
He's been on probably like five or six times. He sounds familiar, but I don't, I don't know who it is. He's, uh, I believe he's Lebanese. Um, mm -hmm. He's uncle to like uh, Ariel Hawani, the, the MMA commentator or a journalist. Uh, but anyway, he's always super interesting. And, and they talked a lot about, he's an evolutionary biologist. So they go into a lot of conversations about uh, just like social, basically almost the actual social dilemma that we're all having right now, you know, among race classes and, you know, politics or whatever. So I'd, I'd recommend everybody go check it out and, and just hear him talk about, um, uh, modernism and postmodernism and a lot of these things that we're hearing right now about, you know, the genders and oh, man, it's just so I love Gad said, I need to go listen to that because you know where I, I'm, I cut you off. So I'll let you get back. You know where I first heard about postmodernism, postmodernism? through the church. Oh, really? Yes. So the, um, second Baptist, uh -huh. they have a podcast and they be spitting game. They spit game and, and all their sermons and stuff. And, it was the ones during the quarantine. The one they had a series where it's like how to vote for, pre what to look for in a president, um, liberalism versus conservatism, um, postmodernism, post critical theory, quiz it critical, critical race, race theory. theory. Yeah. So when that's the guy that uh, it was Dr. Ben Young, the son of Dr. Ed Young, that said um, the the game that critical theory is teaching is that a Latino male is oppressed. So technically, you and I are, are oppressed, right? <laughs> Even though we don't feel it. Right. Um, we don't think that way. Latina female is more oppressed. So my wife technically would be more oppressed than me. Even though she had her own sign language interpreting agency, charges good money per hour for her services. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. she always overperformed. That's why she was always shopping. She always had a whole bunch of money. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like yeah. her merch is doing great. How the fuck is she more oppressed? You know what I mean? And then, and then a, a lesbian Latina is more would be more oppressed than you and I and Marisol. Right. That's according to their oppression Olympics. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you were saying. Well, uh, Gad said. Yeah, I, I, there's so much that, that goes within it, and for people that might not even know what like postmodernism is and modernism and, and what those terms mean he does the best way of describing it possible because he, he studies this stuff and he, he wrote a book that he was uh he was promoting on the podcast so it's uh dan crenshaw show is called uh, hold these truths with dan crenshaw and the episode is uh episode uh, from december 2nd um i highly recommend you listen to it it's uh, really send really me good a screenshot of yeah i'll send you the link right now um and, and i think it'll it'll really open up your eyes to more of this crazy, uh, this word salad that people toss around, you know, especially when it comes to the genders. And, and one of the things that, you know, that he talks about is that on, on that side, on the postmodernism side, the, what is it to, there, there's never too equating. Like I can't even, I can't even put it into words. Like women are, how are women? Um, basically he said he was having a conversation and somebody asked, uh, why do we say that only women can have children blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, for as long as biological, blah, 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 you know, women are. And then she, they, they always find the most, uh, the most like weird little stat to maybe disprove what you're saying to a point where she said, well, in the Sudanese on this tiny island, in a tri there's a tribe where in their history, uh, it's been written that men bear children, you know, and, and they go on these leaps of finding a way to just you know prove whatever it is you're trying to make sense of and it it boils down to it's all nonsense but a lot of this is being taught in modern schools and a lot of this is being taught to the younger younger generation or well yeah. yeah it's really weird um but again i know we sound crazy saying that if we're trying to be whatever is like anti i don't know if that's supposed to be progressive or whatever i i, I get what you're saying it's almost like homeboy saying scientifically it's the women yeah you can go biblically biblically <laughs> scientifically however you want to look at it it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful power it's a beautiful ability it's a it's a you know what i mean it's it's just the dynamic of like for example marisol she always talks about like feminism mm -hmm. and how it it lost her it, it went too far when it started going against, I guess, her her common sense and her Christian upbringing, mm -hmm. which is you need both. Like, you know, you do need a man to have a family or, or, you know what I mean? Like, even to have a baby. I mean, obviously, you can adopt, stuff like that. Right. But it's almost like don't divide the genders. Don't pin us each against each other, you know, old versus young, light versus dark, female versus male. It's just more division. And um, it's like, 
what are you really trying to accomplish by blaming everything on the man? Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's another thing, and I, I wanted to find it before I brought it up, but have you heard of the uh, the 19, was it the 1918 Project? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I really yeah, want to yeah. dive more into that and see what. It's like 17-something. Mm-hmm. Where basically it, it, it's, it's they're teaching it in a lot of schools. Where oh, man. 17, you know, it goes and says that, you know, it dismisses 1776. That's that's not when America was formed. It was it was I believe it was prior to that or after that when you know it's all about slavery and how America is is systemically racist and it's always been and the the point of it is that they're teaching this in thousands of schools now across the country. It's no longer the history that we learned, the U.S. history that we learned, um, and that's also pretty scary. And I would argue, I forget the lady's name, but I think I think she's a Marxist. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, but it's almost like part of a larger agenda Mm -hmm. because whose job is it to approve? Yes. We need to be teaching this. Like we need to almost rewrite history and it tries to further like the whole, you know, slavery. Mm -hmm. I think what they were arguing is no, the slavery stuff started like, that's why they came to build the 13 colonies. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's almost like trying to make America more racist and more inherently evil. And that's why we need to tear down all our systems and start over is basically what is what they're kind of arguing. Yeah. Shit, man, I'd have to find it. I I just, I'm going to be looking more into that just because I find it interesting. And and a lot of this is just kind of rooted in the fact, I mean, personally, we have having kids that are going to grow up learning this shit. I I think it's important to, to kind of know like, the actual history was it 1619 yeah and new york times oh i said 1918 dumb and i was new thinking york- of i was thinking of the spanish flu sorry go so here i'm just gonna read the wiki uh so take that with a grain of salt and here we go mind you new york times had a lot to do with this shit the 1619 project is an ongoing project developed by the new york times magazine in 2019 which quote aims to reframe the country's history by placing the consequences of slavery and the contributions of black Americans at the very center of the United States national narrative. The project was timed for the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the first enslaved Africans in the Virginia colony in 1619. It is an interactive project directed by Nicole Hannah Jones, her, and I think she was up for an award, Mm. a reporter for the New York Times with contributions by the newspaper's writers, including essays on the history of different aspects of contemporary American life, which the authors argue have roots in slavery and its aftermath. It also includes poems, short fiction, and a photo essay. Originally conceived as a special issue for August 20, August 20th, 2019, it was soon turned into a full-fledged project, including a special broad sheet section in the newspaper, live events, and a multi-episode podcast series. So I had heard of it as a podcast. And, um, but you know, obviously a lot of people on the right are really, really critical because of what Rob mentioned. They're trying to rewrite history. They want to reframe things, try to make America seem more inherently evil. Mm -hmm. And it's part of a a shadow agenda to just social engineer and divide us more and make make people hate America and so forth. Yeah. Starting, you know, with the minds of the young, which I don't know what thousands of schools are teaching this yet. I, that's another thing I would want to know next. Uh, that way I can tell people where not to move to <laughs> and where not to send their kids. And you're seeing a lot of people, you know, there's an uprise in homeschooling and an uprise in uh, communal group learning. Like my oldest brother and, and my nieces, like they're, they don't go to public school anymore. They, they basically have, it's a homeschool program, but it's also um, in their community. They live in a nice neighborhood, but the whole family, all the families in that community have kind of come together and said, hey, we also want to do the same thing. So they almost do like a homeschooling in that area where they go to like almost like the mo- I don't want to say the moms are teachers, but it's something like to that mm-hmm. effect where they have a greater control over what they're learning. But the curriculum is still the basis, you know, your math, your writing, arithmetic, all that stuff. But when it comes to history and sciences and things, I don't think most people I know want their kids learning about this. This is our history and this is the inherent dangers of America and the history of America or that there are thousands of genders and not just two and that kind of stuff. You know, I don't think that's a really bad argument to have with people. Well, think about it this way, man. When I was coming up in school, my two older sisters, they were much older. So they were, I'll put it to you like this. Um, when I graduated kinder, my sister Dalila graduated high school. When you graduated kinder? Yeah. Okay. So when I was going into first grade, she was done. Done. 
crazy because yeah, we're 13 years apart so needless to say she when she's let's say if i'm in the fifth grade you know she's a young woman she's married and shit she's in her 20s she's having kids and stuff she's not overseeing what kind of history they're teaching me right now you think my mexican immigrant parents were like a ver mijo ¿Qué historia te están enseñando a ver si es cierto? You know what I mean? No. no. They're just like, go to school, fucking do your homework. Yeah. They're not like, hmm, let me fact check your history teacher on your... Amer They're probably like, dude, we don't know shit about American. We're going to work. Yeah. We'll, we'll be back. Yeah. Um, so, think about all the young kids that are being taught that stuff who don't have no big homies, no big sisters, no big brothers, no parents that are involved saying... What is this 1619 shit? <laughs> yeah. What's that about? I'm going to play a quick... I found the clip I was looking for. I'm going to just play a little bit. It's kind of long, so I'll just play like 30 seconds or so of it. 500 schools in all 50 states. Gotcha, you go. Five school systems, including Chicago and Washington, D.C., have adopted it district-wide. What does the 1619 Project teach? Here are three examples. Have you heard of the 1619 Project? It was published by the New York Times in August of 2019. It won the Pulitzer Prize for commentary in 2020. Its thesis, the United States was founded in 1619 when the first slave was brought to North America. Wait, that brings up some questions. What happened to 1776, to July 4th? The Declaration of Independence, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison. According to the 1619 Project, the Founding Fathers pushed for all that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness stuff to protect their slave holdings. Independence from England? That was just a smokescreen. To them, everything that's wrong with America is tied to her original sin of slavery, from segregation to traffic jams. Yes, traffic jams. For the 1619 Project authors, racism is not a part of the American experience. It is the American experience. Is this true? Let's look at three of the project's major claims. One, preserving slavery was the real cause of the American Revolution. If you asked the founders why they no longer wanted to be a British colony, they would have given you a long list of reasons. Taxation without representation, conflicts over debts from the French and Indian War, and the Stamp Act would be just a few. Probably most important was the burning desire to be free to chart their own destiny as a sovereign nation. Protecting slavery, Slavery was not under threat from the British. In fact, Britain didn't free the slaves in its overseas colonies until 1833, 57 years later, after the Declaration of Independence. Yes, the subject of slavery was hotly debated at the Constitutional Convention, but that was after the war was won. Two, slavery made America rich. Slavery made some Americans rich, true enough. Eli Yale, for example, made a fortune in the slave trade. He donated money and land for the university that is named after him. Uh, but yeah. the institution <laughs> of slavery didn't make America rich. In fact, the slave system badly slowed the economic development of half the country. As economist Thomas Sowell points out, in 1860, just one year before the Civil War began, the South had only one-sixth as many factories as the North. Almost 90% of the country's skilled, well-paid laborers and professionals were based in the North. Banking, railroads, manufacturing, all were concentrated in the North. The South was an economic backwater. And the cost of abolishing slavery was enormous, not merely in terms of dollars, Lincoln borrowed billions to pay for it, but also in terms of human life. 360,000 Union soldiers died in order to free 4 million slaves. That works out to about one soldier in blue for every 10 slaves freed. It's hard to look at that butcher's bill and conclude that the nation turned a profit from slavery. So it goes on. It's a really interesting, I mean, kind of debunks the entire thing. But yet when you have somebody like the New York Times posting this and having that much um, attention brought to it and then said it's going to be taught in schools and it is started to be mm. you know, taught in schools, that is a dangerous road to go down. What are the long term repercussions? Exactly. Of, what are the ramifications of that? Yeah, of rewriting history, having a younger generation believe that America is even more evil and just switching the, the dates around too. It's not even like 1776 no more. <clears throat> yeah. And then, you know, from the, from the jump, you know, Britain didn't abolish slavery until 50 years after the United States did. It's just all these little things. It makes you wonder like, what is the, again, end goal 
of shit like that of just shifting the the perspective of history maybe just making making folks hate their country yeah and then it becomes easier to fucking manipulate them invade them take them over um it sounds like some shit another country would love love to do sounds like a lot of spies <laughs> would love to come in here i would love for you to tell everybody about that leak that says that uh china has two million folks spread out in other countries working in media and companies spreading influence trying to get info so this is uh from business insider india so a data leak shows that over 2 million Chinese Communist Party members were secretly embedded in organizations around the world, including India. So this is reported by the Australian newspaper. Uh, again, Sky News is a good channel if you want to go on YouTube. They obtained the leak database, which uh, apart from the names around 2 million CCP members has their party position, birth date, national ID number and ethnicity. They worked in companies such as Pfizer, uh, Volkswagen, um, ANC and HSBC Bank. So we're talking about a lot of a lot of fucking CCP members among the regular general population, not just in the United States, but all over the world. I wonder how that leaked. Um, it, I believe it's said in here because I read it earlier. But th they're playing the long game, right? So mm -hmm. think about this, bro. If you have two million, you know, soldiers or whatever, right? Spies, whatever people. If you got two million people spread out in different countries getting info working at companies spreading your influence trying to see who you can get dirt on blackmailing people so on how many years until you hit a tipping point in terms of how much influence like fang fang you know with swalwell like am i making sense you know what i'm saying like if you got two million folks out there it's just a matter of time until they run shit yeah so, in quote, it is believed to be the first leak of its kind in the world. The Australian journalist and Sky News host Sherry Markson said, What's amazing about the database is not just that it exposes people who are members of the Communist Party but um, and who are now living and working all over the world from Australia, the U.S., and the U.K., but it's amazing because it lifts the lid on how the party operates under President Jinping. Uh, she, she added, so around 79,000 CCP branches have been set up inside Western companies where members, if called on, are answerable directly to the Communist Party president himself. 79,000 79, of them? Yeah. 79,000 CCP branches. Okay. So I don't know if that's people or groups of people so have been set up in Western companies. Either way, it, it sources back to um, the Communist Party. Okay. Yeah. Ah, Chingo warned y'all. <laughs> I mean, people keep saying like, Oh, what's the big deal? Like, they're our friends. You know what I mean? They're our friends. Let me end it with this quote then. It's it's going to be, uh, it's also going to be, sorry, it's also going to embarrass some global companies who appear to have no plan in place to protect their intellectual property from theft from economic espionage, which we're starting to see now. Ironically, that's come out that, you know, we've had some uh, politicians that were compromised to, to the extent where Pelosi even knew that what's homeboy was compromised a couple years ago. Swalwell. Yeah. And did nothing about it. So why would these, why would these um, Chinese companies try to innovate when they could just they could just bootleg? Yeah, they and especially just, when they're just giving the keys of the kingdom almost. Like, oh, come in. Yeah, we you're cool. Come in with us as long as you're gonna give us something on the back end, right? So they've compromised politicians. They have influence in the media, NBA, Hollywood. They're social engineering. You know what I mean? You got this sixteen nineteen thing. I wouldn't doubt. They got their thumbprint all on it. I mean, the newspapers, the channels, the, the information you're, you're getting, the information you're not getting is damn near more important. And uh, But, hey, we're the coconuts. We're the sellouts. We're the crazy ones. <sighs> yeah. So. All we're trying to do is get this red pill so you can start the peep game. That's all we want to do, man. And with that, I think that wraps up our hot dozen. Hot dozen. Fresh out the oven. Puros pinches tamales. It's tamales season. Um, man. Originally, this was just going to be 12 episodes. <laughs> I know, right? And Rob hit me up. He's like, man, all this shit you talking, man, you man, you, you down to, you know, you down to do a podcast? I'm like, hey, man, yeah, I miss podcasting. Uh, Rob was a integ integral. What's integral. The word? <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> uh, part of the whole program. And, um, you know, Rob's kind of, he's on top of the uh, the Patreon Making sure that we got clips coming. We got a whole highlight 
section on YouTube of just clips. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, the shit don't get taken down. Because uh, I think after a certain date, yeah. you're not allowed to say some of the stuff that we've said <laughs> <laughs> prior to. Yeah. But I'll I'll, uh, I'll sift through those and make sure that because they weren't all about that. I mean, we've talked about a lot of stuff over the last um, yeah, yeah, month yeah. or so. Yeah, we're we're not the main ones saying like it was stolen. They you know they was doing this and doing that. We were just kind of saying like, hey, people already went into it confused and blind and not knowing because we gave too much power to the media and big tech and the algorithm and this and that. Yeah, and like you were saying, when I was seeing what was going down, the reason I hit you up. I was like, you're already, like you said it best at the beginning on the first episode, you took all the arrows, right? Like, you're already taking all these arrows. You might want to just go ahead and just let's talk about everything with people that are willing to listen. Yeah, ex- exactly. Because me trying to, uh, I guess, educate and expand upon and elaborate and have a more robust discussion than Latino Hollywood would like. You know, everyone that was trying to boycott Goya and these North Face type of motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Of course, they're the ones saying like, okay, how much longer? Like literally, like people I know, people I'm cool with are like, so when are you going to let it go type of thing? And it's like, let, you're already not understanding where I'm coming from <laughs> if it's a let it go type of situation. Yeah. It's not about let it go. It's about understanding the world you live in and what filter you, you're using to view it. If you're thinking the news is all real, even though they're hoaxing you, they literally put hoaxes out there. They're literally burying, hiding stories and scandals, shit that should be on your radar, considering one of the candidates that was running was under hell investigations. Everything from they impeached Trump for holding back aid to Ukraine because he for political reasons, yet Nancy Pelosi held back aid to Americans for political reasons, yet you live in a world where she's the good guy and he's the bad guy. And then people are like, how could you vote for a racist? I'm like, I don't know if Donald Trump's racist or not. But uh, I see a whole bunch of evidence about Biden. But but what about when Trump put out the ad? That's one we need to look into is this ad about the uh, the, the five, the uh, exonerated Central Park Five. Oh, right, right. Because I've heard, I need to look at it myself, but I've heard that it was put out in a time where people weren't back in the police. Um, and supposedly the ad was more so about we need to back the police and we need to be tougher on crime and bring back the death penalty and stuff like that. And I don't know if it's specifically like those teenage boys, I know they did it and they need to get the, the, the fucking electric chair. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was like that, but uh, of course that's always one of the ones he's been racist. Yeah. And it's like, well, I never heard about this racist talk until he said, I'm going to drain the swamp and I'm going to put America first and I'm going to renegotiate all these deals and I'm going to bring jobs back and these people full of shit and the news is fake. And all of a sudden, and we got to get sudden, him out of here. He's fucking homophobic, Islamophobic, everything phobic. He don't jam Despacito. <laughs> he wants us to drink bleach. Hoax, 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 hoax. Oh, everybody, we appreciate everything. If you could go to patreon.com forward slash Red Pill the Malice and keep this ship going, we'll whip up another dozen. And uh, we've got a lot of ideas that we bounce around. I know mm-hmm. it's the holidays, you're going out of town, but we'll still manage to not only record, but uh, make some of these uh, ideas come to fruition. Yeah, and we'll figure out uh, how, how I'm going to zoom in or, or you tell me off air yeah. while I'm out there in Boston. Maybe I'll have a nice snowy background, you know, very patriotic type of... Uh, you know, red, white, and blue thing happening. I'll have to go buy a flag or something. Maybe I could take some of these Trump flags that uh, some fans brought <laughs> to the show. And I will say that ever since I, um, what's the word? Ever since uh, I started showing love to Trump and basically not being, not echoing what Latino Hollywood was saying, mm-hmm. talking about Biden, Biden's for la raza. If it feels like I've, stumbled across new fans more fans people Mm -hmm. that are just like oh shit dude i ain't know you know who's this guy so it's been positive man and for any closed-minded person that is just believes the fake news they believe trump is racist they believe i voted for a racist and i'm anti-immigrant blah 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 for every one of those people man it feels like it's five to ten open-minded positive pro-capitalism yeah you know patriotic and shit ready to support so hey it's, it feel like a win-win i love it man well safe travels from everybody i'm sure that's listening right now when you go out of town and 
we'll uh we'll do this again real soon and i'm gonna see if penny needs to wear a mask on a plane or not yeah look that up like today for sure thank you guys patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales peace